Alright, and welcome to this Disney Riffic Kid Time Story Time. I'm so excited. See the line where the sky needs to see? It calls me. Oh. And no one knows how far it goes. Hit it. Hit it. Who's coming? If the wind hit my sail on the sea stays behind me. One day I'll know how far I'll for preparing this special number with me. Oh, how, how could I refuse when you asked me, Green Pear? Aloha! And now, ladies and gentlemen of Kid Time, Story Time, and all you Green Bear fans, I present Storyteller, who's going to read Moana! Wow, wow. Epic isn't even the beginning of that. And this particular read-along storybook has a CD. So if you end up getting this book, you can actually hear the story uh, narrated and they're going to have all the special sound effects and stuff. But for now, you are at Kid Time Story Time and we are our own special effects. Are we not? Do I not sing everything for you? In the beginning, there was only ocean. An island emerged, the mother island, Tefiti. Her heart had the power to create life itself, and she shared it with the world. But in time, oh, some began to covet Tefiti's heart. They thought if she, that if they possessed her heart, the power of creation would be theirs. And one day, the most brazen of them all voyaged across the vast ocean to take it. Oh, yeah. You know who he is, don't you? He was a demigod and a former wrestler of the wind and sea, a shapeshifter, a trickster, a warrior who wielded a mighty magical fish hook. And his name was, that's right, you know his name, The Rock. No, Maui. It was Maui. In the village of Montanui, a small group of children gathered around Grandma Tala listening to her tale. Without her heart, Tefiti began to crumble, giving birth to a terrible darkness. Not darkness, no! Let's see here what happens. I'm losing my way. I'm so excited reading the book. Maui, well, uh, it says, so in the village, right? So, 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 so then, so, okay. So basically we have uh, Maui who takes the heart of Tefiti and then Tefiti, oh man, you think you've thrown a temper tantrum? Nothing, nothing, nothing compared to the temper tantrum that Tefiti is going to throw after Maui takes her beloved heart. I mean, you'd probably get pretty upset too. Well, she was so mad that she struck Maui from the sky and he was never to be seen again. And the heart of Tefiti was lost to the sea. And then Grandma Tala spoke of a terrible darkness spreading throughout the land. And the kids were, well, this one is scared. This one is not sure. This one also was quite alarmed. This one. This one looks quite delighted at the tale. And just then, Chief Tui appeared. Hearing the children's cries, he tried to comfort them. No one ever needs to go outside our reef. We are safe. There's no darkness. There's no monsters. Yes, there are. You know it. I know, he doesn't want to scare the kids. But we have to be brave in the face of fearsome things. While Chief Tui soothed the other kids, young Moana slipped down to the beach and she reached for a beautiful shell at the edge of the water when she spied some large seabirds ah, 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 attacking a baby turtle. No, not baby crush. I don't know if it's baby crush from, um, from Finding Dory, but it's sure for Finding Dory and Finding Nemo, but it sure, sure looks like him, doesn't it? Baby turtle was saved by Moana. And then suddenly the ocean waves beckoned Moana. So she's like, Hee -hee! and she steps forward and the ocean is playing with her hair. And she's, and well, she notices a, a, a little stone, a stone with a small strange spiral pattern on it. And she had just grasped the object the stone when she heard her father call Moana. Whoop. The ocean quickly whisked Moana back to the shore and the stone fell from her hand. So the dad picks up Moana. Oh yes, you are the next great chief of our people and you will do wondrous things. And off they went. 
back to the village, but behind them, where no one could see, Grandma Tala took the half-buried stone that Moana had dropped, took it out of the sand, and put it in her pocket. Years later, time passes. Time traveling in the book. Now Moana's a teenager, and her father's preparing her for the time when she would be chief. One day he asked her to lead a council meeting, and Moana's surprised to learn that the villagers' crops are dying and there's no more fish in the lagoon. What? That beautiful blue lagoon? It looks like a dream. If I was a fish, this is where I would want to swim. Am I right? Am I right? I mean, this is the place. This is like fish paradise right here. Well, Moana obviously wanted to help her people, but Chief here wouldn't let anybody go beyond the reef. But Moana thought that maybe we should go out there into the open sea to, you know, find more fish. And of course, he gets mad. No one goes beyond the reef. Well, later that day, Moana's watching the fishermen. And she tried to think of a way to help, but she doesn't want to disobey her father. But she knows in her heart that the best chance is to go beyond the reef. I mean, if there's no fish here, maybe the fish are out here. You can't just wait around and hope for the best. We got to take action, right? I mean, that's what we have to do. Well, she grabbed the boat. An oar and her pegged pig pua. I mean, you can always, you, you can never leave home without your pet pig pua. Am I right? And she set stale, but she didn't go very far. A huge wave knocked her out, destroyed her boat, and pua and Moana tumbled into the water and washed up on shore like seaweed. As Moana lay in the sand, discouraged, Grandma Tala appeared as if by magic. She's always around at just the right time, isn't she? That's what grandmas do. With a mysterious smile, Grandma Tala led Moana to a hidden cave. What's in there? Grandma handed Moana a torch. Please handle the torch with safety. The answer to the question you keep asking yourself, who are you meant to be? Go inside, bang the drum, and find out. This Grandma Tala, she is a sphinx meaning she's very mysterious, isn't she? But intriguing. Moana went in and could hardly believe her eyes. It was full of these beautiful ancient boats. And she got onto the biggest one where they had had a big log drum there. Remember, she's supposed to hit the drum, so she did. And the sails of these boats seemed to come to life. She could feel her ancestors crossing the sea in search of new lands. We were voyagers! We were voyagers! Why'd we stop? Well, Grandma Tala explained that the ships had stopped coming back when Maui stole the heart of Tefiti. You see, one bad thing frequently leads to a whole bunch of bad things. But the important thing to also know is that one good thing also leads to a bunch of good things. And bad things can always be reversed with a bunch of good things. So she explains that all the ships would never come back after Tefiti's heart was stolen. So they had said, no more boat trips because we don't want to keep losing people. So grandma now presses the heart of Tefiti into Moana's hands. Remember that stone with a spiral strange pattern on it that she had dropped as a baby in the ocean? She had it and gives it to her and says, the ocean chose you. Oh, look at that. Look at that. How beautiful is that? We're setting sail. Shmoana runs to the council meeting and says, we were voyagers. We can save our island. We can voyage again. Oh, man, was her dad, the chief, mad. And then just then, just then, in that moment, a messenger comes running. The grandma was sick. What? But she was okay just like one page ago. But yes, that's how it happens. Things happen quickly. So... She, Grandma, tells her granddaughter, Moana, follow the fish hook, and when you find Maui, you grab him by the ear and you say, I am Moana of Montanui. You will board my boat, sail across the sea, and restore the heart of Tefiti. Go! Oh, so Moana knew she was right. She set sail. Um, and accidentally, this, this crazy uh, chicken named Hey Hey well, technically a rooster, hey, hey, jumped in the water, panicked. Ah! Well, anyway, she managed to keep him on the boat and set sail that night, but there was a huge storm. And do you see what happened? Moana stranded on an island. But look who's on the island! He's, he's, he, was, he was so happy to see her, but no, not really her. He was excited because she had a boat, a boat. 
Moana tried to tell Maui that he must go with her. I'm here because you sold the heart of Tefiti and you will board my boat and sail across the sea and put it back. But Maui was like, blah, blah, blah. I'm all about myself. Look at my tattoos. I'm so awesome. I brought you fire. You're welcome for the islands that pulled from the sea. And then he steals her boat. Yep, stole the boat. Pretty rude, I know. I mean, he is a, a demigod, but that still doesn't make him absolutely perfect because he's only a demigod, right? So Mo Maui is trapped Moana in a cave, sets sail in the boat. Moana escapes, swims towards Maui. He tosses her off, but the ocean keeps blah, 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 putting her back. He tosses her off again. Blah, blah, blah. She comes back. And she says, I am Moana of Montanui, and you will restore the heart. And then Maui starts freaking out. Hey, 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 hey. He says, that's not a heart. It's a curse. If you don't put it away, bad things are going to come for it. And just then, boom, speaking of bad things, a huge spear hits the boat. Ah! He looks around, Kakamora, murdering little pirates. They're actually feisty little coconut, adorable coconut warriors, but adorable and dangerous at the same time. So you can't like try to pet them or make friends. So they try, they, the, 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 the heart of Tefiti fell from her necklace and then Hey Hey eats it. And then one of the coconut warriors picks up Hey Hey. And then Moana's racing after the guy with the coconut guy who picked up Hey Hey. And then it's pirate after pirate flying all over the place. And then, well, they get away. That's the important thing. They got away. <gasps> oh, but Moana knew that she needed Maui's help to reach Tafiti and restore the heart. But Maui needed her help too, because without his hook, he had no magic. Where's the hook? One clue, this guy. So Moana offered him a trade. Okay, we will get your hook, take out Taka and restore the heart. Deal? So the guy's like, okay, deal, deal girl, deal. But it's being held by Tamatoa wasn't always this grand. I was a drab little crab once. That's right. He's a giant crab who likes to collect shiny objects and encrust them all over himself. I will sparkle like a wealthy woman's neck. Scrub the deck and make it look shiny. Yeah, he was a pretty vain crab as crabs go. Well, Let's see, this guy, pretty vicious, so they had to like jump down into his house, kind of like a breaking and entering thing. And, uh, and of course, he grabs Moana, he grabs Maui, he's about to kill Maui right here, or seriously poke him, I'd say. And he couldn't, he couldn't get it. He can't shapeshift without his hook, and Tamatoa is not giving up the hook, you know? <laughs> get the hook. So he can't. So Moana grabs the fish hook by pretending that she's given him the heart of Tafiti because everybody, everybody's all about the heart of Tafiti. But she had tricked him with a rock that just looked like the heart. So Tamatoa was, Tamatoa was left with a rock and uh, probably a backache from all that rolling around. And Moana still had the heart and rescued Maui because she's a beast. All right, let's see there, let's see. It's so shiny, this book, isn't it? Oh, it's like Tomatoa. It's so shiny. Watch me, with, watch me sparkle like a wealthy woman's neck. I love that line, it's so funny. Uh, let's see here. Moana had kept her part of the deal, right? She helped Maui get her hook. Now it was Maui's turn. So Maui taught Moana how to sail and navigate the stars, but getting to Tafiti and giving her the heart back, that's gonna be, well, a complication, would you call this a complication? A very fiery, angry, tantrum complication? I told you, it's bigger than any tantrum you have ever thrown. Well, as they approached the island of Tafiti, smoke billowed into the sky. It was Taka, the lava monster. With Moana's encouragement, Maui felt confident that he could defeat Taka. It's Maui time! The demigod transformed into a hawk Arr! and flew towards the blackened barrier islands around Tefiti. Suddenly, Taka rose up and poof, knocked Maui out of the sky. Oh no, Maui, don't get hurt. 
You've just redeemed yourself. Moana caught Maui in her boat, and Maui told Moana, turn around, we're not ready to face Taka. But Moana, she just kept going. Taka brought its giant fist towards their boat. At the last second, Maui raised his fish hook and blocked the blow, and the impact created a tidal wave that caught, carried Moana and Maui way out to sea, far from Tafiti. Now, looking at Taka, Moana realized something. The monster was made of hot lava, which means it could not touch the cool ocean water. Oh, I see, I see. So if Moana could distract Aka, maybe she could sneak past it. So she turned to Maui for help, but now Maui's like, no, 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 no. My fish hook has been damaged. One more hit, it'll be destroyed. And without my hook, I am nothing. Goodbye, Moana. What? So much for being the god of being helpful, Maui. Not your welcome. Well, Moana didn't know what to do because she really needed Maui to restore the heart of Tafiti. And so she showed it to him. The ocean chose me. But Maui says, oh, and this is hard. It chose wrong. And then he went all hawk style ah! and flew away, leaving her alone. <sighs> this is the moment, the hard moment when you decide if you're gonna press on or if you're gonna give up, what do you think? What do you think she's gonna do? I'm getting closer so you could see it because I know it's very bright. There, does that help you see better? I think so. All alone, Moana dropped the heart of Tafiti back into the ocean. She was sad. She told the ocean, you have to choose someone else. Choose someone else. And she watched sadly as the heart sank back into the ocean. But suddenly, a glowing manta ray rushed through the water towards her with a voice. You're a long way past the reef. It was Grandma Tala, right here. She told Moana she'd been wrong to pressure her. I never should have put so much on your shoulders. If you're ready to go home, I will be with you. So Moana, well, wait a minute, she hesitated. She, she no longer knew what the right thing to do was. She, I mean, she thought she'd given up, but then she tried listening to her inner voice and finally, and the answer came to her. She was Moana. She, I love my people and the sea. She was a wayfinder. I'm a girl who loves my island. I'm a girl who loves the sea. It calls me. And she dove back down into the ocean floor and grabbed the heart of Tafiti. When she resurfaced, Grandma Tala was gone, but she knew her grandmother and the spirit of her ancestors who voyaged bravely across the sea would always be with her. She was determined to face Teka, the lava monster, with or without Maui's help. I am Moana of Montanui. Aboard my boat, I will sail across the sea and restore the heart of Tafiti. Moana steered her boat towards a narrow gap in the barrier islands. Remember, the lava monster couldn't touch the water. And then Taka rose to stop her, but then she was tricking and reversing course, heading in another direction. Taka's throwing boulders. Moana's making it through. We did it! And she looks around. Hey, hey! Oh no! Hey, hey had fallen overboard. No, not hey, hey! Hey, hey must be saved. When Moana turned around to save the crazy, crazy rooster, Taka tipped over the boat and raised its fist, and she was preparing to smash the vessel to bits. And at that second, Maui. Ah! Return to help Moana. He realized he didn't need the fish hook to be himself, and he blocked Taka's blow with the cracked fish hook. I've got your back, chosen one. Go save the world. So Moana and Hey Hey climbed back onto the boat. Wait, Maui, thank you. To which he said, Of course, you're welcome. So Maui is holding Taka Bay, and Moana reached Tafiti. She raced up a slope, but huh, where Tafiti should have been? was an empty crater. Maui flew towards the lava monster, but Taka knocked him to the ground, shattering his hook. Oh no, the hook is broken for good. But just as Moana stared at Taka, she caught a glimpse of a familiar spiral in its chest. A spiral, do you see that? A spiral just like the spiral in the rock, in the heart. She knew exactly what to do. She held up the heart, instructing the water to let the lava monster through. And suddenly the monster starts racing towards her 
and Moana stood tall, unafraid. And then a low, sweet song filled the air, and Taka suddenly grew calm. And the song was, I have crossed the horizon to find you. I know your name. They have stolen the heart from inside you. But this does not define you. This is not who you are. You know who you are. Moana reached out and touched Taka's forehead. And then Taka's rocky exterior began to fall away. And inside emerged this beautiful smiling face. It was Tefiti. Her life-giving heart had been returned, transforming her back into her true self. And a, a crown of flowers blossomed on Tefiti's head. Look at how beautiful she looked and peaceful, knowing her heart was back inside of her. Well, Tefiti thanked Moana and Maui, repaired Mo Moana's canoe, and restored Maui's shattered fish hook. They hugged as they were preparing to leave. And she says to him, you could come with us, you know. My people are going to need a master wayfinder. And Maui hugs Moana and says, they already have one. And suddenly, bloop, a new tattoo appeared over Maui's heart, and it was of Moana. Now she set a course for home to the island of Montanui, where the mother and father were there waiting for her, hoping for her that safety, had no idea where she had gone off to or how she was doing. And, but while they're there, they notice that the land starts to turn green again. Then they race towards the water's edge and there is Moana, triumphant, emerging on the horizon. The great wayfinder was home. With Tefiti restored, everything on Montanui began to bloom again. The villagers pulled the ancient boats from the cave and repaired them. The time for voyaging had returned. No way, no way. we know the way. It was time for Moana to lead her people on new adventures across the sea. And that was a story of Moana. Away, away. We are explorers reading here we shine. We tell the stories of our elders in a never-ending chain. Away, away. We know the way. Winnie. Once again, thank you for joining me on this special Disney Kid Time Story Time. Anytime, Green Pear. Ah, ah. And thank you, kid, for joining us on this epic journey through adventure and daring and acts of courage on Kid Time Story Time. We'll see you next time, kid, because we're always voyaging the high seas of adventure around here. Until then, be brave and follow your destiny.